the Biden administration has tried to take the high road. They haven't really gotten engaged in the day-to-day operations of Alvin Bragg's prosecution of Donald Trump. They're not playing politics with this, they've said. This isn't a political prosecution. This isn't an effort to stop Donald Trump from getting reelected. This is just justice. You break the law, you got to pay the piper. This is just the court system. And then yesterday, this happened. For these low lives, for Trump. They lied under oath. They lied under oath. Who lied under oath? Those what are you, what are you telling me? You. Those two Excuse me? Those two traitors behind you. They lied under oath? That's right. What are you saying? They're traitors. They're, tra- they're traitors. You got I don't know. I don't even know how to deal with you, my friend. I don't even know how to deal with you. So the Biden-Harris campaign decided yesterday would be a good day to send 80-year-old Robert De Niro walking down the street in a baby blue oversized face mask four years after COVID to hold a press conference denouncing Donald Trump as a tyrant who wants to destroy the planet. The Biden-Harris campaign held that event yesterday. The world is laughing at Robert De Niro, and the entire country is puzzled as to why the Biden-Harris campaign would commit such an act of political malpractice. It was a blunder of historic proportions. I, I, I often quote the TV series on HBO, Veep. It was something right out of Veep. It's something that President Selena Meyer or Vice President Selena Meyer, depending on what chapter you're on, would do. To send De Niro into a crowd of Trump-loving supporters outside the courtroom to blast Trump as a tyrant who's not just going to destroy New York City if he gets reelected, according to this raving lunatic, this raging maniac, Robert De Niro— Trump wants to destroy New York City, the country, and the planet. He wants to destroy the the world. He's not content with just destroying the country. De Niro said he wants to destroy the entire planet Earth. The cover of today's New York Post is one of the most classic covers in the history of that storied newspaper. It's got a picture. If you're watching on Salem News Channel, I'm holding it up. Got a picture of a raging Robert De Niro and it says, Raging Bull Blank, Sideshow Bob De Niro Goes Ballistic, Stumping for Biden Outside the Trump Trial. And it says in the caption, The Biden campaign bizarrely sent actor Robert De Niro to insult Donald Trump yesterday outside the courthouse, where closing arguments were starting in the, in the hush money trial. But the scene soon devolved into chaos as hecklers shouted him down, screaming, you washed up mook, you tired old hag, you has been. And then De Niro screaming back, you're all a bunch of effing idiots. The Biden-Harris campaign did this. In other words, this isn't Alec Baldwin or Robert De Niro just deciding to hold their own event. This was a sanctioned event by the campaign. So that leaves me with one of two conclusions. Yesterday, a poll came out that says 54% of registered Democrats want Biden replaced. This was as big a political sabotage act as I've ever seen. It was one of the stupidest, most confounding, hilarious campaign decisions in the history of politics. Somehow the Biden campaign thought it would be a great idea to show that Biden isn't involved in prosecuting his political opponent by holding a press conference outside the courtroom, including special guest lunatic actor Robert De Niro, who wore a mask on an 80-degree spring day four years after COVID, one unhinged Capitol Police officer, that guy with the tattoos head to toe, Fanone or Facone or whatever his name is, he he was another special guest. 
and they spent the whole press conference getting drowned out by screaming Trump supporters yelling F Joe Biden. And then they had to answer questions like, is Trump a threat to all these wars that Joe Biden has gotten us into? I, that was the day they had yesterday. Now, I'm going to tell you something that could not be just a blunder. That was by design. I'm, my, my first thought after I was taking it all in last night, and this all unfolded during the show yesterday, and we, we reacted in real time, my first thought was, they want Trump to win. The Biden campaign is figuring, hey, hey better off, let's just let, let's just turn the keys to the White House over to Donald Trump and see what happens. That was my first thought. But then I, I got to thinking about the, the poll that says 54% of Democrats want Biden replaced. This was an act, an intentional act, to sabotage the Biden candidacy. At the Tomb of the Unknowns, the Memorial Day ceremony, the world saw Biden fall asleep. Last time he did an, an event honoring uh, our, our, our military, he kept looking at his watch. The man is, is not going to make another term. Nobody thinks he's got four years in him. Nobody. So the Biden-Harris campaign said, you know what we're going to do? We're going we're gonna to just fall on the sword here. We're going to blow up the campaign. People working on the Biden-Harris campaign would rather work to get Gavin Newsom or Michelle Obama or all of the above instead of Joe Biden. There is no way that they didn't see that coming yesterday. When, when, when Robert De Niro, as I saw on my video monitor here in the studio, came waddling down the street with his baby blue face mask on, I thought, this is going to be a train wreck of epic proportions. It, it was worse than I, I imagined it could have been. It was a disaster. A complete disaster. I mean, if not Biden, I mean, if, if, if not, uh, if you didn't have your fill of Robert De Niro, how about this Michael Fanone? This is the guy that's got tattoos head to toe. He was the Capitol Hill police officer who got assaulted and has allegedly lied about everything that happened that day. He makes all the media rounds. I'm sure he wrote a book. He's making millions, be, playing the victim of January 6th. He was there too. Well, first of all, like, I'm incredibly grateful uh, for, you know, Robert De Niro lending his uh, celebrity uh, and his voice uh, to this cause. That being said, you know, I think that it's um, disheartening to know that that's what it takes three and a half years after an insurrection at the Capitol in which hundreds of police officers were brutalized and our democracy was threatened to get the media's attention. And listen, I'm not painting everyone in with a broad brush here. Some networks have done an excellent job. Yeah, like MSNBC, your regular haunt, CNN, your hangout, they've done an excellent job. Here's De Niro. I mean, this is classic. This is th this was so hilarious. Here's here's De Niro shouting as all these Trump supporters are screeching at him of what a has been washed up old fool he is. Listen to De Niro. The Democrats, you are gangsters. You are gangsters. You're washed up. You're a little punk. You're a softy. You're a nobody. Your movies suck. You're trash. You're trash. You're done. You're done. After this. You're done. <laughs> I mean, you you wouldn't. Selena Meyer in Veep wouldn't be that stupid, and yet they are, or are they? Now I got a couple of working theories here from a very smart caller who said to me, "You know what? A listener to this show. Have you seen the reporting that Biden plans to hold a national address?" from the White House after the verdict is reached this, maybe this week? What's he going to say? You know what one of our listeners suggests? Biden is going to say, I cannot possibly be on a debate stage June 27th in Atlanta, Georgia, with a convicted felon. I won't dignify the office of the presidency by being part of a debate with a convicted felon. That's what this is. That's what his his message is going to be. I think that's a great theory. What about you? I, I believe that's got a good, good... And what about my theory? Let me just ask you directly. And I want you to flood my phone lines, my text line, with an answer to my question. 
wasn't this an intentional act by the Biden-Harris campaign? There's no way Biden's campaign could be this stupid. This was a this was deliberate. It's sabotage, and they want somebody to replace Joe Biden. And they proved it yesterday. They certainly proved that this is a political prosecution. They certainly confirmed what we've all been screaming about for all these many weeks. The Biden administration has politicized the court system to try to stop you from voting for Donald Trump. They proved it yesterday with this stunt. That That's a given. But now let's get into the weeds a little bit. And let me see if you agree with me that this was an act of sabotage by the Biden campaign to throw Biden overboard and to get him replaced with Gavin Newsom or Michelle Obama or one of the above. Let me see what you think. 